Arabs speak out against Hamas. Arab intellectuals and Saudi journalists are vocally condemning Hamas's large-scale attack on Israel on October 7th, 2023, challenging conventional narratives within the Arab world. These voices argue that the attack serves the Islamic Republic of Iran's regional ambitions and undermines the Palestinian cause rather than advancing it. Critics warn that the attack not only hampers peace efforts, but also exacerbates the suffering of the Palestinian people. They draw parallels between the attack and past terror incidents like 9-11 and Hezbollah's action in 2006, questioning the world's tolerance for such organizations. The Egyptian-born, U.S.-based reformist author and researcher Hussein Abu Bakr Mansour states, quote, I'm not asking you to love Israel. If you are critical of Israel and believe there should be a Palestine, please continue to do so. What I'm asking for is courage to not pretend that the murder, the abuse of women, and the kidnappings we all witnessed are not an accurate representation of a morally catastrophic system that we all know is unfortunately all too common and in need of an honest conversations and serious attention. Stop deceiving yourselves and let's engage in a dialogue about how to bring about change, end quote. Far from being a rallying cry for Arab unity against Israel, the attack is seen as a catastrophic miscalculation that could result in the destruction of Gaza and loss of civilian life. These dissenting voices are arguing for a reevaluation of strategies, uh, advocating for diplomacy and peaceful resistance as more effective paths forward. So, this is very interesting. So, I'll give a little background about why I wanted to cover this. So basically, especially in the first week after the attack, I was incredibly disturbed. I was incredibly disturbed, not only by the attack that we we're seeing, by Hamas's glee in advertising, not hiding, openly advertising what they did. Um, and I was incredibly disturbed by what seemed like a mass inability to talk frankly and just straight up condemn what happened. Um, and, you know, granted, we all have our own personal, you know, algorithm feeds. Like, I don't know how much my dashboard on, you know, Instagram or Twitter, you know, reflects the world, obviously. And obviously there's a language barrier. I can't see what other people in other places of the world aren't saying like in English, you know what I'm saying? Um, or what, th what they're saying, but not in English, you know, I don't have access to that. Um, and I was so deeply disturbed by, I guess the, the silence, the equivocation, um, the, the rationalizing, the justifying and, I was literally just holding on with all of my heart <laughs> to um, one of my friends uh, who who is um, from Palestinian background who was so horrified by what happened and made no excuses for it. And then also some friends of mine um, who run a podcast called the Habibi Power Hour, one of whom is um, actually a practicing Muslim and then one of whom is an, an ex-Muslim. And how, how strongly they spoke out against what happened and made no excuses. And, um, but I was like, so disturbed. I'm like, it can't literally just be these three people that I know that are willing to talk frankly and honestly about what happened and not make excuses for it and all this stuff. Um, and I was talking to Armin about how disturbed I am because I said, Armin, it's very easy it's very easy to find Jews across the world who condemn what the Israeli government does. It's actually kind of a fixture of the community. It's like a fixture of the Jewish community that, it, that they are some of the strongest like opposition to the Israeli government in general sometimes. It's very yeah. easy to find Jews that will speak out against what the Israeli government does. But I was so disturbed. I'm like, why is it so 
hard right now? Why does it seem so rare to find Arabs and Muslims who are willing to be honest about the brutality that we're seeing? And I was so disturbed by this that I actually intentionally went to go seek out people that were speaking against this. And the reason why is because this is me doing my own bias check. You know what, it, what I mean? When my algorithm is pouring me with nothing but examples of people equivocating and actually celebrating the barbarity that we saw on October 7th, if I'm not careful, that is going to deeply influence my opinion about an entire collective of people. And when that happens, it's a human fact that we'll start experiencing less sympathy and then start, you know, in, in less empathy, less sympathy. And then, and then humans just have a tendency to start excusing brutality when we see people that we believe to be less human being treated poorly. Right. And so I managed, as I was doing some digging, to find a couple of very interesting um, influencers from different regions um, who are mostly Arabs who are uh, speaking against this and also have their own methods of trying to promote peace in the region, right? And, um, but much to my surprise, the number one source that I found of examples <laughs> of Arabs and Muslims coming out and speaking strongly against this was actually all collected and organized and translated by memory TV. <laughs> and this is hilarious because memory TV is accused of being Islamophobic and bigoted and racist and all this stuff. But I'm like, wow, when I'm doing work to make sure that I don't develop biases against people, when I'm explicitly looking out for critical information, you know, to feed my brain with other information to make sure I'm not building poor beliefs, it's so ironic to me that it's memory TV that provided me with the most examples of this. Um... And so that's what I wanted to do today. Armin and I both agreed. Yeah, Zaid is saying we just love memory TV, honestly. <laughs> uh, it's a national treasure. So, <laughs> um, that Armin and I talked about this, and that's basically what we wanted to do today. Because I think, like we're saying, with a, a, a time like this, it's very easy to start building really dangerous biases against entire groups. And the fact of the matter is, we don't know everyone from these groups, and it's important to go and do the work of demonstrating to ourselves that not everyone thinks this way, right? And um, so I, I, I wanted to... to um, bring some of that to our audience because uh, it's really important to highlight these things. And I have a few specific quotes that I wanted to read, um, Armin, but before I uh, dig into that, do you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, I just want to mention that we it's not that we're denying the mass support for Hamas that we're seeing by many, many, many Muslims around the world right now. We're not denying that. We see that and we acknowledge that as a major problem. So, but it's important even with that not to generalize, right? I think some people uh, bring examples like what we're showing here to deny the big problem that we have in the Muslim community about the major support that exists for terrorism, right? So that's one extreme, and then we have another extreme of people who think like, oh, if you're an Arab, you're basically a terrorist. Or if you're a Muslim, you're basically a Hamas sympathizer. And I think that's another extreme. So, and I think we're taking a good, I think we're doing, we're analyzing this properly. The mass support for Hamas and terrorism exists, and, and it's a problem in the Muslim community um, and among many Arabs. Um, however, there are many people who disagree with that and that means that you can't generalize that means that when you see an arab or you see a muslim you cannot just assume that they're a hamas sympathizer 
because these people do exist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to read a few quotes that I pulled from these different articles. There was, cause there were three different articles that memory did basically compiling a lot of these examples and translating them. Um, so, uh, some of them come from Saudi intellectuals. Some of them come from Arab influencers. There's, um, a big variety. Um, so, uh, here, here's one quote from, uh, Quote, this clip, uh, and so this is talking about the imagery that came out on October 7th. This clip has distorted the image of the Palestinian cause. Calls of Allahu Akbar over the body of a woman after she was stripped and RAPE'd by criminal scoundrels is a shameful act that has nothing to do with liberating Palestine, manliness, or jihad. The question is, what will happen now? Israel will kill thousands of Pal innocent Palestinians and will destroy infrastructure in the Gaza Strip. And then Hamas, its scoundrels and mercenaries will cry, oh, Arabs, where are you? Saudi Arabia is betraying us. You are normalizing relations in Israel. We want support. We want money. We want and want. What do you think of that? It's pretty strong. I don't know how to yeah. add to that. Um, yeah. Another another. Uh, reaction from someone was this video with its shouts of Allahu Akbar will spread all over the world. This is the greatest gift we could give to the enemies of Islam and Muslims. Um, another person said, just as we are opposed to the bombing of Palestinian civilians by Israel, we must oppose the killing of hostages. And then another user said, quote, the only one benefiting from Hamas's crime is Iran. And that's the what, Islamic Republic. Yeah, it's, yeah. Iran is not benefit. The Iran is not benefiting from any of this. It's the Islamic Republic who's benefiting from this. Yeah. The Iranian people are suffering because of all of this. So just um, yeah. And one the one person had this interesting quote that I thought was um really important. And it said, quote, these events happened, were documented, and were publicized. But most of the Arab media did not show these Hamas videos or even the blurred versions of them. That was a mistake because if they had shown them, they would have enabled the viewers and readers to understand rationally, mm -hmm. not to condone, Israel's unprecedented response and the rapid and effective Western support that it quickly managed to mobilize. Hmm. And I thought that was an interesting um uh, wow. thing to note as well this idea that the the atrocities are being hidden from the population so that when the rest of the when the population then sees the very strong reaction that it garners they're confused and they don't understand where such a strong response is coming from because they they were not allowed or um the truth was hidden from them um yeah. And what I thought was really interesting was that quote that I gave when I was giving the, the summary text of the, um, uh, the quote where they, the man was saying that he's not asking you to love Israel, but to just be honest about the morally catastrophic system that we all know is too common. Um, I was very intrigued by that quote and I went to go read the full post. And it turns out that this Egyptian reformist is act actually follows us on Twitter. And I started um, to look into his writings and his writings look like fire. So I might come back to you guys after reading some of his work because I was immediately obsessed. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah. I just thought it was, this is an important thing to cover. Yeah, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Uh, we got two super chats. Let's do that because we need to move on to the next news. Okay. Uh, I can't remember what this person's name is. Is it, is it Hi, Debna. Hi, Debna Ad. Ab, Ab Ibn Ad. He said, make Atheist Republic great again, LOL. Excuse me? What does that mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> and um thank you uh prashi gave us 20 canadian dollar super chat wow thank you that's very generous seeing what do you think of islamic dawa orgs with the fixation on highlighting white female converts they are used they are used for marketing islam how these females reject left 
Western lifestyle for Islam, white converts are seen as a prize by extremist Muslims. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah they they have they have um, they have a fetish for white women. Obviously, they will when a white woman turns Muslim, they are going to constantly use that as marketing. Given how much how white how popular white women are in among many Muslim men, um, and they constantly try to marry them as well. As soon as if you're a uh, white woman and you're struggling to find no no i shouldn't have said that but if you become if you if you convert to islam there will be muslims lining up trying to marry you and it doesn't matter what age you are it doesn't matter how you look as long as you're white and as long as you're a woman you becoming a muslim will mean muslim men will be lining up in huge numbers trying to get you I've literally seen people perpetrate scams doing this on Twitter. Like yes. Someone will set up a fake account oh. being a white woman, being like, I just took the Shahada. Like, please help. Oh, me yeah, 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 yeah. Brothers and sisters, like, I need money to buy hijabs or something. And then it, <laughs> and it's all fake. And they just know that this is an easy way to get money because people are going to like mm. just jump at the opportunity and highlight them so much. There's like multiple examples of people scamming using this. It started it started with white women realizing how much money they could make off of this by saying that they're they're Muslim now and a lot of I oh I'm Muslim and now oh here's what you do. If first it was Muslim white women saying, I'm a Muslim now and I'm being discriminated against because I'm a Muslim and now I can't like pay for stuff and here's my GoFundMe. Easy way to make money. And then some people realize you don't even have to be a white woman. You could just have a picture of a white woman in a hijab and just set up a GoFundMe and that's easy money. By the way, it also works on the way, other way around. I've noticed with girls, if you're Korean, okay, and look like K-pop boys, what? right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're a Korean boy, if you become Muslim, Muslim women... Young Muslim women will go crazy for you. Oh, it worked for yes. <laughs> so white Muslim white women converting to Islam and Korean boys converting to Islam, you know, it works either way. So <laughs> it's the cheat code. You didn't know that? That's a big that was a big thing. Young Korean boys turning converting to Islam. It was like their social media was exploding with Muslim girls. They were, it was such a good way to get um oh you didn't see that? I should have said that. I mean, I know about <laughs> yeah, like this this Dawood Kim guy, but I didn't know that there were examples besides him. Oh yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Japanese might work as well. If you're Japanese, it might work as well. As long as you pass for K pop looking. Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube? Blasphemous art ever? We do. And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.